Mary was born on 5 October 1658 as Maria Beatrice d'Est in Modena, Italy. She was the second-born daughter of Alfonso VIII, the Duke of Modena and his wife Laura Martinozzi. When she was four years old in 1662 her father died and her younger brother, Francesco would inherit the duchy. Francesco's mother would act as his regent until he came of age. Through a strict mother, Mary received an excellent education speaking fluent French and Italian and she would later go on to master English and Latin. Initially her Mary's mother Laura hoped for a match with the young king of Spain, Charles II, but when not match was forthcoming she would accept the advances made by Lord Peterborough on behalf of James, Duke of York. Mary would marry James by proxy on 30 September 1673. Mary marriage was blessed by Louis XIV of France, as Modena still lied within the influence of the French. Mary would be greeted much colder in England as Parliament which was Protestant-controlled believed it was a plot by the Catholic Church in Rome against the country. The English public would only refer to her as Mary and once she was married she was labelled the Pope's daughter. Parliament even threatened to have her marriage to James annulled which led to James's brother Charles suspending Parliament to ensure the wedding went ahead and to preserve the House of Stuart. Mary was 25 years younger than James. James was afflicted by a stutter and scarred by smallpox. Having not met him before the marriage by poxy, she would first met her husband on the second day of their marriage ceremony on 23 November 1673. Initially, although James was pleased with his bride, the feelings were not reciprocated. Mary at first disliked him and would burst into tears when she was him, but she would soon warm to James. Both of James's daughters had different feelings towards Mary, his younger daughter Lady Anne would dislike her leading to Mary having to play games with her to win her affection. Mary would also incur minor gambling debts in spite of receiving £5,000 every year and the fact she also loathed gambling. On 10 1675, Mary would give birth to her first child with James, Catherine Laura but the child did not survive. Also, being on excellent terms with James' eldest daughter, Lady Mary, she would often travel in disguise to visit her in The Hague in the Netherlands when she married William of Orange. She would be accompanied on her journeys to the Netherlands by Lady Mary's younger sister, Lady Anne. In 1668, following what became known as the Popish Blot, the Duke and Duchess of York were forced into a temporary exile in Brussels, as the Duchess's Catholic secretary was falsely accused in the plot. James, Mary and the Lady Anne, would also stay with Lady Mary and her husband the William of Orange along with their three-year-old daughter Isabella. During this time, James would have an affair with Catherine Sedley, but she would become distracted when her mother would visit her. James and Mary's self-imposed exile would be cut short, when James's brother, Charles became very sick. They would travel back quickly fearing that Charles' illegitimate son, James Scott Duke of Monmouth may usurp the throne and also enjoyed the support of the majority in the Houses of Parliament. Charles though recovered from his ill heath and James and Mary returned to court was perceived as being too soon and they would be forced into exile for three years at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh alone, as their brother Charles would insist that both Lady Anne and Isabella would remain in London. Following a recall to London in February 1680, James and Mary would return to Scotland but in a better light as James was created to the role of King's Commissioner of Scotland. During their second period in Edinburgh, Mary's daughter Isabella would die in February 1681. Her death would send Mary into religious mania which worried her doctors. Her death would send Mary into religious mania which worried her doctors. King Charles would go on to have the pamphleteer executed. In 1682, the reaction to the Popish plot had quietened down enough to allow James and Mary to return to England in May of that year. In 1684, 
James would be admitted again to the Privy Council following the Rye Plot in 1682 which plotted to kill both King Charles and James, and place the Duke of Monmouth on the throne as Lord Protector. Mary's husband, James ascended to throne on 6 February 1685 following the death of King Charles II. Mary was crowned queen on the same day of her husband's coronation on St. George's Day on 23 April of the same year. Mary's coronation would be the first full length for a queen consort since Henry VIII's coronation with Catherine of Aragon. Mary at this point has still not recovered from the death of her daughter, Lady Isabella, four years earlier. Politics were stirring in Europe at this point fearing that Queen Mary life was at risk, so much so that even the French court were seeking a candidate to replace her. In the meantime, Mary was seeking out her own political alliances trying to match her brother the Duke of Modena with Anna Maria Luisa di Medici of the famous banking family from Florence. Two years later, in February 1687, King James would begin an affair with the Countess of Dorchester, Catherine Sedley. Such would be Mary's anger she would move to new apartments away from the King in Whitehall. Then, in July of the same year, the Queen's mother, Duchess Laura would die before marriage arrangements between the Duke of Modena and the de Medici family could be concluded. The Queen would inherit a considerable wealth from her mother including large sums of money and jewellery. It is around this time, whilst the English court was in mourning that William III of Orange, son-in-law to King James II would send spies to the English court to monitor how much dissent there was for James. Trouble though started to brew later this year when Queen Mary would fall pregnant again. The Protestants within the government would become disillusioned when they realized that the child would be a male Catholic heir. Rumor circulated that Mary birth was a stillbirth despite there being many witnesses and that a baby had been smuggled into the birthing chamber. Nonetheless, James declared the child, James Francis Edward as his heir. Both of James's daughters, Mary and Anne, believed that a substitute had been placed in the line of succession, a fact which was reported back to William III of Orange by his spies in the English court. Whig nobles within the English government took advantage of the situation and led to what has become known today as the Glorious Revolution. William of Orange would be invited by the government to invade England. The revolution would remove James from the throne and deny James Francis Edward of his right of succession to the throne. James would flee to France with his family and stay with his first cousin, King Louis XIV of France who would go on to support what would be known as the Jacobite cause. James was formally deposed as King of England on the 11th December 1688. The following year on the 11th of May 1689 he would be deposed in Scotland. James's own daughter would be formally declared joint monarch with her husband, William III of Orange. James though, believed it was his divine right to remain monarch, much like his executed father, and believed that Parliament had no right to depose him. James would set up his own court, provided by Louis XIV of France in the Chateau de Saint-Germain-en-Laye in Paris. Although becoming a favorite at the court of Louis XIV in France, Mary was soon to clash with the French king's daughter-in-law, Marie Anne. As Mary was recognized as the Queen of England by the French, this led to her outranking Marie Anne. This led to Maria Anne refusing to have anything to do with Mary. Mary's rank at the French court would soon rise to the highest ranked female at Versailles. This is due to Louis XIV having a secret wife, 
Maria Anne's demise 1690 and there being no female descendants from the king's daughter-in-law in the form of a Dauphine. This would last until 1711 when the next Dauphine was born. During this time, Mary would give birth to one final child to James, a daughter called Louise Mary who was born in 1692. James was excluded from life in the French court, this led to him leading an expedition financed by Mary to Ireland in March 1689. His effort to regain the throne through the support of Irish Catholics and Jacobites rebels from Scotland would lead to his defeat by his son, William of Orange, at the Battle of the Boyne in 1690. Distraught at the rout at the Battle of Boyne, Mary found happiness when he brother the Duke of Modena married Margarita Maria Farnese of Parma in 1691. This happiness would be short-lived though when the Duke of Modena passed away without an heir in 1695. The left only one sole heir to the Duke of Modena, Mary's uncle, Cardinal Duke Rinaldo. Mary's relationship with her uncle soon soured though. First the Duke would refuse to pay her £15,000 from her dowry leave her in debt. The Duke though would finally pay this dowry in 1700. Then the Duke would align himself with Leopold I, the Holy Roman Emperor who was an enemy of both Louis XIV and her husband, James. The start of the 18th century would bring tragedy for Mary. Whilst at Mass in March 1701, her husband would suffer a stroke whilst at the Chateau de saint germain en laye Despite receiving medical care from the personal physician of Louis XIV, James would suffer from a seizure and passed away on 16 September 1701. Mary would remain dressed in mourning for the remainder of her life. Louis XIV would declare James and Mary's son, James Francis Edward as King James III and VII of England, Ireland, and Scotland. Mary would be appointed as James Francis Edward's regent until he reached his 18th birthday. Mary, first act was to lay out her son's claim to the English throne. The nobles of Scotland would send Lord Belhaven to France to meet with Mary, to urge her to convert her son's religion to Protestantism in order that his claim to the throne would be strengthened on the death of William of Orange. Mary's mind could not be changed and compromised was reached that if James Francis Edward became king he would limit the number of Catholic priests in England and not tamper with the Church of England, in return the Scottish nobles would back her son's claim. When William of Orange passed away in March 1702, the Scottish lords requested that James Francis Edward to travel to Scotland where an army would be raised to capture the English throne and stop the Hanoverian claims. Mary though refused her son to travel to Scotland and in turn ending her son's claim to the throne. Her regency would end over her son when he reached the age of 16. Her husband's last surviving daughter, Anne, would inherit the English throne. The pressure that had been forced upon her made Mary to seek respite with the nuns at the convent of the Visitations, Chilot, near Paris where she would visit every summer. In 1711, Mary would find out her son, would lose the protection of the French court and was forced to leave the country when Louis XIV signed the Treaty of Utrecht. The following year, in 1712, her daughter, Louise Mary would die of smallpox. Deprived of a family and a life under the protection of the French court, Mary would live out the remainder of her life in poverty, unable to travel between Chilot and Saint-Germain. Queen Mary would pass away on the 7th of May 1718 from cancer. She would be buried in the nunnery at Chilot, 